Bismillah, walhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And welcome back to another production from Raddu Shubuhat. I know it's been some time, and my apologies for the delays of getting back to you with another production sooner. Uh, but due to uh, my travels for work and also with the summer and um, the school immediately after, um, the time has just been very difficult for me. Um, but I wanted to squeeze some time out this weekend uh, to give you some updates on the other Shuba hat and also to let you know that everything is fine, we're okay, alhamdulillah, and uh, what our uh, future agenda is, inshallah. Um, before we left, um, we was changing our focus uh, from dealing with the likes of David Wood and um, people like him. And we wanted to look at also um, the atheist um, perspective. <clears throat> so we may be trying to get into that. And we also was doing some live, um, live streaming. Um, and we want to continue that. In travels, um, I lost my luggage. I actually had purchased specifically a, a live stream camera uh, to do live streaming to give better quality. Um, so unfortunately in traveling, um, the luggage was lost and we have to make claim for that and also uh, purchase another, um, another uh, camera and other equipment. Uh, so make dua, uh, everything goes well and <coughs> inshallah we could soon um, get to that. We also mentioned previously that we had um, queued up already a series titled The Light and the Buwa. And this is um, proofs of prophethood of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And we look at it in three phases. The first phase we looked at was the proofs of his prophethood or prophethood to come before he actually um, embarked upon the prophet, prophetic, prophetic mission. So this was before his life of, of a prophet from the, um, birth up to the age of 40, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then the next phase is of course, during the mission of prophethood. So once the commission of prophethood was um, began, then this lasted for 23 years, from the age of 40 to 23. So we look at his mission and the proofs of his prophethood during his mission. And then after his mission, uh, which is after his life, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we look at also proofs of even after the death of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, of how we see the proofs of his prophetic mission uh, manifested. So in these three phases we want to look at uh, the proofs of prophethood, and this series is already queued up. We may go back into it, do some small modification, add some things that we missed, um, but it's already queued and ready to go. It's just a matter of time. Uh, so inshallah, make dua for us that Allah give us barakah in our time, that we can come to you and bring you this series that will inshallah invigorate and motivate uh, our Muslims, our youth uh, to be proud and um, uh, happy that we have as our example, the Messenger of Allah, Muhammad ibn Abdullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In the methodology of how we're going to do this series is also still in, uh, in debate, whether we're going to do it like this, like a live camera feed, or we would do it like in a video uh, with uh, a series of uh, screenshots and um, nice scenery. Uh, but this is still up for debate, so uh, you can give us your feedback on that and let us know what you think. Also, uh, some time ago, and I think we may have mentioned this as well, I'm not sure, um, but I'll mention it now again. Um, there was a, uh, a paper that I wrote, it's called A Debate About Life. A Debate About Life. And what this is, is um, it's a story, it's fiction, um, but it, um, the material, the content of it is very uh, true, factual. Uh, and what we did, we made like a, a scene in which uh, a young man entered into a room and in this room there was a group of uh, individuals debating uh, and sharing their thoughts on life and what they believe and why. And no one knew he was there, so he sat quietly in the background, he watched the entire debate, and then he told his story after. So the debate about life is a story, it's a narration of an individual watching a debate about life and then telling about that experience. 
Um, so um, due to the fact that it has like multiple characters, we wanted to try to put it in a script uh, or like a short movie. So if there's anybody uh, that's out there that is in this field and that can help us with this, inshallah, uh, doing like multiple voices or like this, um, then please let us know. I can send you the manuscript of it. And inshallah, we can look at uh, producing a nice um, quality production as regards to this. Uh, and I think that it would be very instrumental in uh, bringing many people uh, to consider the idea of God and Islam as a vehicle by which we reach God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then lastly is a book that I'm in the process of writing. Um, and it's something dear to me um, because it deals with children. And I have uh, multiple children. I have three boys, and three girls um, that I am um, with and caring for, alhamdulillah. So, uh, inshallah, we're trying to give our best to our children, fulfill our rights uh, upon them. And I want to leave uh, a legacy for them by which, inshallah, they live their lives by, as well as many others can benefit from. Um, as you know, this is our work and this is our passion and we ask Allah for success in that. Um, so the book is predicated on 40 ahadith of the Messenger وسلم, short hadith by which the kids were memorized as pegs. And in uh, the book, each hadith has a commentary by which the teacher, the parent, uh, the mother, the father, uh, the mu'allam, the mu'allima, um, whoever it is, the, the murabbi, they will uh, explain the commentary to the kids and teach them and inculcate in them um, these meanings of the hadith. The hadith will be classified into seven categories or seven, seven states that is uh, the, the essential curriculum of the book is seven states by which to nurture in our kids uh, in order to produce the most proficient uh, 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 individual. So uh, these states, in the order of which they are delineated in the book, is first one is Rahmah, which is mercy. And we mentioned a hadith uh, to highlight this. And there will be several hadiths mentioned on each category. Some category may have three hadith, some may have five, some may have two, like this. But in any case, uh, the first uh, state, state first hal, is um, termed Rahmah. And we bring a hadith where the Prophet Muhammad says, I mentioned about um, those who show mercy, we have mercy shown upon them. So have mercy in the earth and the one above the heavens will have mercy upon you. Uh, like this, uh, we highlight this hadith and then we do a commentary. And I'll read an excerpt quickly before we close uh, from this, inshallah. Uh, the second state, the second hal is husn uh, al-khulq, good character. And no one needs to spend any time discussing the importance of having good character. Uh, but we have this as a second state that, inshallah, should be nurtured into the child. Uh, and we bring several hadith in this uh, category, in this state, uh, to show um, how uh, we can ex uh, ex example exemplify good character in the lives of our kids, inshallah. The third uh, state is mas'uliyah, which is responsibility, which is very, very important um, because if we don't instill in our children a sense of responsibility while they're young, then uh, when they get older, they become um, pretty, um, or it becomes pretty difficult for them to establish this in their lives and uh, it becomes harder for them to be more responsible and move um, as they need to uh, in a successful manner as they become into their young teens, into their adulthood. Uh, so the third category or third state uh, is mas'uliya or responsibility. The fourth state is tawakkal ala Allah, trusting in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is very important, especially in a time where we are uh, seeing many things that are causing confusion and bewilderment uh, amongst the people that uh, we need to turn back to Allah and just anchor our faith in Him and rely upon Him and trust in Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, to get us through uh, the storm of confusion and doubt and um, dismay that is occurring uh, widespread uh, amongst the Muslim population and beyond. Uh, so trusting in Allah is something that we definitely need to instill and inculcate in the lives of our children uh, so they can be productive and know how to deal with tragedy and adversity and tribulation when they meet it. Uh, fifth is remembrance of Allah, dhikr Allah. And this is 
uh, very essential because we find in the life of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam a strong, a strong, a strong uh, constant state of remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in all of his matters. He always remember Allah. And this is uh, very important because when in, we're going to highlight this also in our series on the proofs of prophethood. But when you look at the life of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you see that all the time he was in remembrance of Allah and mindful of everything he did and he tied it into doing it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which means he was never oblivious. He was never just wandering about and doing things without any purpose or any idea what he was doing. And this is very important for our kids to have aim and focus and objective in all of their actions uh, in their lives. So, uh, thikr Allah is very important. Uh, waking up, you remember Allah. Going to bed, remember Allah. Before we eat, remember Allah. So we're always conscious of what we're doing. And this consciousness transcends uh, just religious uh, activities, but in your lives, you're always conscious of what you're doing, and the most conscious individual uh, will be, inshallah, uh, very productive uh, in other matters in his life. So dhikr Allah is very important as an anchor for that. Uh, the sixth one is fear and awareness of Allah, which is termed taqwa law. So uh, having an awareness, having a consciousness, and having a fear of the displeasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and this is also Absolutely essential, as Allah says, all you who believe, fear Allah as you should be feared, and do not die except in a state of submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is very important. And the seventh one is self-awareness or accountability, which is termed muraqaba. And this is being mindful of your state and uh, your, 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 um, how you go about in your life. So, you know, uh, taking a self-accountability. Being mindful of what's going on, where you are, uh, what are you doing um, before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is also similar to another state which is termed Ihsan, in which the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was visited by uh, a guest uh, who was the angel Jibreel alayhi wa sallam, and he asked him a series of questions, uh, four questions and to be exact. Akhbirini an al-Islam, akhbirini an al-Iman, akhbirini an al-Ihsan. And then he also he told him, in, you know, tell me about the sa'a uh, or some of its signs. So the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, he explained to him what Islam was, he explained to him what Iman was, um, and then he also explained to him what is Ihsan, what is the state of um, perfection. And he said that it is to worship Allah as if you see him, see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even though we cannot see him, but then know that he sees us. So in top of the law, So even though you cannot see Allah, which is impossible in this dunya, but then know also that Allah sees you. So knowing and having a state uh, of ihsan, uh, another expression is muraqaba, uh, which is accountability, knowing that you're being watched uh, and being aware of uh, your presence before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These seven states, um, we believe that if our children are given um, complete understanding and, and we instill these in the lives of our child, uh, our children, then inshallah, they will have success uh, in this dunya and in akhirah. Um, they will be a very round, full individual, inshallah, and a soul um, going back to Allah as intended um, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the first place. As Allah says in the Quran, uh, oh you satisfied soul, oh you satisfied soul, return back to Allah, you being pleased and him being pleased with you. So this is uh, what we want, inshallah, to give uh, for our children. This is their right over us as parents, uh, that we give them and instill in them the best values, uh, the best character, um, and uh, the knowledge that will enable them uh, to be the best individual. And this is directly from our obligations, as we learn also when we study like fiqh, uh, and we learn our uh, fardu ayn. We know there's a section in fardu ayn which is called akhlaq, al mujiyah wa muhlikah. So it's the character that will give you success, or the character that will cause you destruction. And we need, uh, inshallah, absolutely to uh, impart this to our children as um, caregivers for them. So quickly in closing, inshallah, I want to just read to you uh, two examples uh, from the book itself, uh, and uh, then we're close. 
And inshallah, um, we hope uh, to be rejoining you soon, inshallah, uh, with um, some full um, content and getting back on track, inshallah. Uh, make dua for us um, and uh, let us uh, look at uh, first hadith is uh, the hadith on Rahmah. And this hadith uh, states the translation, uh, the merciful are shown mercy by Al-Rahman, who is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So be merciful on earth, and you will be shown mercy from who is above the heavens. The womb is named after Al-Rahman, so whoever connects it, Allah connects him. And whoever severs it, Allah severs him. So this is the hadith, uh, the translation of the hadith, and the commentary uh, on this hadith, just a paragraph or so from it, uh, we say that this hadith is the first hadith traditionally taught to students in their studies and likewise. It should be from amongst the first hadith that is also taught to children and their nurturing by their parents. The quality of mercy is not a self-contained quality, like beauty or shyness. Rather, mercy is a quality that inherently demands its possessor to give from what they possess of it. And thus, the importance and benefit of this quality is twofold. On the one hand, it will inculcate in the child himself the honorable traits of mercy, compassion, benevolence, and other related noble qualities. Secondly, it will also assure peace, safety, kindness, generosity, and more to all of those within his reach. Therefore, he will become an inwardly sound and an outwardly safe individual. So this is uh, an uh, uh, example of the commentary uh, that we begin uh, this hadith with. And another example, uh, another uh, hadith and commentary is a hadith um, under the topic of responsibility, mas'uliya. We bring this hadith. This hadith uh, it states that the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he said, "Verily, Allah has prescribed ihsan, proficiency, perfection in all things. So if you kill, then kill well, and if you slaughter, then slaughter well. Let each of let each one of you sharpen his blade." and let him spare the suffering to the animal he slaughters. So even in something uh, like slaughtering an animal, the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, gave us um, prophetic wisdom and guidance on how to do that, and to make sure you do it in the best way with in sparing any suffering to the animal that one uh, is to slaughter. Um, the commentary on this hadith begins, it says, one of the easiest shortcomings for kids is to fall into the lack of being proficient. Half doing something is oftentimes their best effort if they are left to themselves. Why? Because in many cases, what they are asked to do is not in their greater interest. So there is more concern on when they will finish and get out of it and not about how they will finish. What we learn from this noble and lofty prophetic tradition is that it's the quality of the job that's most important. It's the higher aims of the action that makes it gain its merit. And if that higher aim is always present, then, then every action done by such an individual will always be at the top. So when a person does his action with his hand, no matter what, what it is, the action will always be for amongst the best actions because it's done with the highest aim and purpose in mind. And this is what we want to try to instill uh, in our children, inshallah. So this is just an example from uh, a couple examples from uh, the book that we're working on. Uh, we have already compiled all the hadith and we're working on a commentary now uh, to complete each one. And then we will classify them under their respective uh, state or condition or hal. Um, and then inshallah, we will try to put it out uh, for the masses to benefit from. Uh, so uh, we ask for your continued support. Support us by uh, liking the video, sharing it, helping us uh, uh, obtain more subscribers as we need to get more subscriptions so more people can know about the work we're doing. And also uh, support us on uh, platforms like Patreon and other things that will allow us, inshallah, on the time we need uh, to kind of dedicate more time uh, to doing our work here, inshallah, and not have um, the necessity to travel and lose time in, in that regard. So support us on Patreon or support us however means you can, uh, financially as well, inshallah, that would be also a big help for the work that we're doing. Uh, this is what we want to present. Again, inshallah, we apologize for our long period off 
and we hope uh, that uh, we get back to uh, our regular schedule soon, inshallah. Uh, make dua for us and uh, leave us your comments uh, in the video. Hada wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala wa sallallahu sallam. Subhanaka lahum wa bihamdika. Ashadu wa la ila ala ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu alaykum. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.